Today, I'm talking to John Casey about journaling and to be more exact about sustainable journaling. I want to know all about what that sustainable part means later. Um, John is an avid practitioner and also teacher of journaling and the founder of sustainablejournaling.com. And that's actually how I found uh, John. And this is a place where one can learn easy strategies to effectively help create a daily journaling practice that can be ma maintained over a longer period of time. So John, um, thanks so much. I really appreciate making time on this uh, Saturday morning in New York for you to talk with me. Be before we dive in, I would like to start off with um, perhaps a personal question. Why, what is your story and, and what led you to discover um, journaling and, and why did you get so enthusiastic about it? Why did it, did it became a critical part almost uh, of your life? Um, so I would say the beginnings of it were, was very simple. Um, I was, um, I had tried journaling on and off, you know, throughout my life and just, uh, um, wasn't, I, I love the idea of it, but, um, I was never able to do it on a regular basis yeah. and um, it just, uh, I think it at times it felt heavy, like I was overthinking it and I just would. Um, so then um, I was in 2014 that um, I again, like had found myself um, basically feeling very frustrated by the fact that I couldn't remember what I had done over the previous weekend or the previous month. And it kind of made, made me, you know, uh, made that my, that time that I couldn't remember feel a bit meaningless, you yeah. know, and just, um, so I decided that I wanted to try again and this time, uh, in earnest and to, and to do that in such a way that, um, I wouldn't be able to maintain the practice over a longer period of time. Um, so I decided to create some really, uh, simple strategies um, that would allow me to, um, do it over a longer period of time. Um, and just kind of concentrate a bit more on the, on the habit forming, um, mm -hmm. aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and, um, so over time, uh, th I found that these strategies worked and that, um, um, and doing it over an extended period of time, I, I was able to discover the value of it, um, which was became so much more than just like rem remembering, being able to like document what I had done, like remember being able to refer back to like what I had done over the previous weekend, um, just uh, documenting events and activities and days. Um, and uh, so, if it ever came up in conversation that like I kept a journal, the response that I almost always heard from people was, oh, I've always wanted to keep a journal, but I can't keep it up. You know, I just, yeah. um, lose the habit. I'm sorry, what's that? No, I said people lose the habit. Yeah. 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 So then I realized like that I could teach this, you know, I just kept finding myself wishing that I could find a way to, to share the, what I'd learned. Um, so it was when the, um, the shop, the barber shop where I work, I'm a barber, um, when it was, um, had to close for three months, uh, during the pandemic, yeah. I decided to create a curriculum, um, for a four week workshop, um, and, uh, a, an, a zoom workshop. And, uh, so, um, and that's pretty much, that's how it started. Um, and it's just been, I'm learning so much more about the practice and just like, just um, getting, getting so much from the participants and, you know, the, the workshop continues to develop. Yeah. So by teaching it, you learn much more. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I remember when, cause I've been, I've been as these people and maybe as yourself at a certain stage, I've been trying to keep up this habit. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't figured out a way, so I'm really curious to hear more about it. I haven't figured out a way for it to stick. 
But what I did notice when, when I was journaling, what I did actually for some time was I didn't journal about my days per se, what happened, but mm -hmm. I only journaled about the meetings that I had. Okay. So everything, and this was also in, in a business context, but also in a personal context, yeah. and always writing in the evening. I, I did write in the evening. I know that you write in the mornings. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, reflecting on those meetings, I always remembered so many more things and again, so many new insights that I wasn't present to or aware of when the meeting passed. You know, so taking the time to reflect was hugely beneficial. And I yeah. imagine this is also something that you recognize in, in the practice becoming more, more sustained. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. why should someone bother to take up this habit? Because clearly you have a thing with writing and, and journaling and the mission even of, of sustainable journaling is to help people create an easily maintainable journaling practice that will allow them to discover the benefits of a simple yet powerful century old practice. Mm -hmm. So why should someone take on this habit? What are the benefits? Um, that it uh, provides the space for structured reflection, just as you said. Mm. Um, and uh, it also like having having documentation of just like um, of your life, knowing that you have something that you can refer back to, you know, for tracking experiences, feelings, um, noticing patterns. Um, and uh, let's see, um, it, uh, it just gives you, it gives you permission to like, you know, um, know that you are worth having these moments of self-care. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it's interesting that like, I find that it, the benefits kind of fall into these, these two categories of, of the product and the process. Um, the product is having, you know, this documentation um, of, of just every, of every day and just like um, a place where you can, you know, it can be something so simple. Um, one of my entries was uh, just <laughs> stayed in all day and did my taxes, but that day was accounted for. And there's like such power in, um, in just finding the value of each day. Mm -hmm. And so um, just, just writing even the most simple, uh, you know, it can be a most simple sentence. It can be paragraphs, you know, whatever. You could be writing about the events. You could be writing about, you know, your feelings about it, your reactions to it. Um, so having that documentation, having that, like, you know, written, um, uh, you know, um, something concrete that you can actually hold and read that, um, that, that honors a, like an individual day, regardless of, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's something very interesting or not. So there's the product and then the process and the, the value in the process is just, I think, as you said, you know, just like having that, the space for the structured reflection, having that yeah. time to just sit and, you know, just remember what the day was about. Um, uh, it's also just wonderful for, um, improving executive functioning, you know, just, you know, having the time to sit and reflect and remember that like, oh, I had that phone call, you know, where I promised that person I'd do something, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, so those are, um, and it's interesting that um, in my experience and uh, when I ask the participants, you know, often um, how often they go back and read their previous entries. Um, that isn't, doesn't seem like something that many people do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but just knowing that they can, you know, is, um, is wonderful to know that they have that resource. Yeah. But it seems like there's so, what I had not um, expected was how much value there was just in the process itself. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as you know, in, our lives, you know, in 2021, 
uh, there's so much, there's so much overstimulation <laughs> and, uh, just to have that time, you know, of stillness is, uh, you know, just a wonderful experience and, you know, to know that that can be, you know, a part of your day. So, um, you know, when you, and it's hard to, um, I think it's hard to give yourself permission to do that unless you have created a habit, unless you've created a structure. Yeah. A structure, yeah. yeah. You said something interesting just now, which which triggered me, and and I'm sure this this comes up um, with the participants in the workshop also, and why some people won't able to keep up the habit. You said one day was an entry, is just stayed inside and did my taxes, and maybe right. that was the entry entry for the day. So very short and concise. Perhaps there were some other things, but I know that when when I was journaling, and it's also something that I saw on your Instagram page. Um, there was some mentioning of keep it up or keep it up for four weeks. And even if some days you don't still keep up the habit. And I think that's a critical thing yeah. where you don't make yourself wrong for maybe not having a full eloquent entry one day. Maybe it's just, I stayed in and did the taxes. That's it. Still, there's mm -hmm. something there. And I think for, for me, it was that I made myself wrong at times when I had been writing a lot. And then some days it just doesn't flow. I'm really tired or I, I don't have time. And then mm -hmm. it becomes kind of a, a burden and something heavy to do. And then you, it, you start to resist it in a way. So can you mm -hmm. say something about that and how we can be light and nimble and just relaxed about the practice? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, um, I think, one of the most uh, effective parts of this like sustainably sustainable journaling method which is um i encourage uh participants this um to at least write the day and date for every day if nothing else yeah. and if you um and there's such power in that you know just that day has been accounted for you recognized you know, that this day is documented, it was valuable enough to at least write the day and date. Yeah. And in doing that, you're also creating the space. Um, and in case you have the time and headspace to go back and write something in there, even if it. something as simple as I can't remember what I did, I probably worked, you know, the day is accounted for. Yeah. So, um, so I always, I call it retroactive journaling. If you do miss some time, um, like if you miss like a week of, you know, a week's worth of entries, I strongly encourage participants to go back and go back and fill in those days and dates, have them accounted for, and just like maintain maintain that structure of, of the journal. Um, so I use the, um, on, on one of the presentations, I have a, um, I show a stained glass window. And um, that's just, uh, and I talk about how like the eye goes to the beautiful pieces of colored glass. Mm -hmm. And in the next frame, I remove the glass and all you see is the geometry of all these interconnected shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're all, they're all different sizes, different shapes. Um, some are big, some are small. Um, and I compare that to our days. Some days are just like not much is happening. Some days are really big and interesting, yeah. but they're all connected together. They're all interdependent, interdependent. And in the next frame I show, if you remove one of those cells and you can see how there, there's this huge gap and how the um, integrity of the structure is compromised by just removing just one of them. So I call this strategy building the framework um, where you're just getting those days and dates in. And, um, and then if you have the time and headspace, you know, go back and fill them in. Um, yeah. I, I imagine, sorry to interrupt, I imagine what that does, even if you make the time by honoring the practice, by putting the day and the date it's still an invitation to maybe put a few sentences or a few words there, or at least at some point to come back when you have the space for it. So I, I think it's a, it's a great, great suggestion. It makes sense also the analogy you see from the, 
yeah, from this, this window frame with the, with the different elements. You keep the structure in place in, in this way, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting how often, like, I go back to referring to the value of structure in this practice. I mean, that's, that's true of any, any practice. And I think um, <clears throat> often people um, think of journaling as like a free association, you know, practice. Um, and that can be, uh, that's great, you know, for some people, like just writing whatever comes to their head, writing whenever they want to, uh, that might work for some people. But I find like, you know, um, ha having some structure to it, you know, that's what makes it, you know, yeah, allows you to create the habit. Yeah. Um, so I think this method um, finds a balance between structure and also like um, being able to create whatever you want. Just, I talk about how like having structure creates the space for creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just, um, yeah, just um, like if you, if you tell, if you give someone, you know, um, a lot of like, say, here's all the art materials you want and you have as long as you want to make whatever you want. Um, a lot of people I think might be a bit crippled by that, you know, just by all the options. Um, so if you, um, Tell them like you have to do at least one thing. You have to at least write the day and date, yeah. um, and then write whatever you can, whatever comes to mind. Even if you only have like a lot of one obstacle, you know, we talk about is not feeling like you don't have time to keep a journal. Even if you a, writing a journal entry can really take two minutes. So if you are really busy, you know you have two minutes. I tell people set a timer for that two minutes. Yeah. And that, so you have that kind of sacred space of two minutes writing the day and date, you know, and just like what's happened so far in that day. And it could even be keywords, I met. You could just jot some things down. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's your journal, but it will still trigger your memory and it will create anchors for, for uh, yeah, for, for, to come back to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, um, I talk about memory triggers um, for like, days when you like, you know, say you can't remember what happened on a particular day, you want to write something about it. You can, um, a really valuable, most people have digital photo libraries, you can go back and look at that. Um, you can look at your calendar, look at emails that you sent. Yeah. If it's recent, you can look at texts that were exchanged. Um, if you have nothing else, you can look at what was happening in the news that day and just write down a headline that was interesting to you. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so there's so many different ways to to allow for this practice to have some some plasticity um, that allows you to to go back to it yeah. as needed. In 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 the article um, of the New York Times, I think it was November second. I'll, I'll post the link to the article so people can read it because I think it was a great write up. Okay. Um, I've learned that you have actually quite a strict daily ritual. And actually picking up on what we just talked about, I think discipline actually gives us freedom. This is at least my experience. And, and we've talked about the practice of this 39 ideas for life, where I have these nine days in which I have to produce something. I mean, I've had some, because my, my deadline is really until midnight on the last day. And I've had something that I came like a few minutes before that, but I still finished it, you know? And there was something there. And for some, yeah. I was very happy about it. And other ones, I thought, oh, I could have done better or whatever. But at least there's something. Mm -hmm. And you have the, 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 the daily practice that you write in the morning, actually from 7.30 to 8. So half an hour you, half an hour you have for, for, for writing. And what mm -hmm. I also wrote is you, you, you practice yoga, I think, um, before that. So there's this routine. Mm -hmm. How does this, this daily practice of writing, how does it affect your day ahead? And how does it help you reflect on the past day? And what impact does this have on your life and on your awareness? I mean, these mm -hmm. are a number of questions tied up into one. Yeah. Um, let's see, my day is actually my regular days are actually a little bit more flexible. Um, Sundays, um, I have a little bit, ah, that's interesting to say it this way. 
I have the freedom to be more structured. Um, and uh, so, um, but yeah, very often the uh, the writing does happen for about, uh, you know, I set, a, set aside, you know, 15 minutes to 30 minutes in the morning before I start work. Um, but as far as like, how does it affect, you know, um, how I go about the day, um, I it provides so much more clarity than I had expected, than, mm. um, than I had anticipated when I first started this. And that, um, you know, I think we all have, you know, so many times when our heads are just spinning with yeah. ideas and thoughts and concerns. And to-do lists and, and yeah, exactly. things we shouldn't forget. Yeah, yeah. So it gives you a place to write them down and know that they're safe. They're there. You can go back to them whenever you want. Um, you can see which of those um, need the most attention. Um, and, uh, you know, and they're like, even if they're just, you know, it can be anything like you're honoring, you're honoring that, those experiences, those thoughts. It also allows you to, um, to see them for what they are, mm -hmm. you know, um, when, when you write something down and yeah. you can just kind of like step away for, from it, um, you know, it, it gives you, uh, it can afford for some perspective. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, just kind of, um, yeah, just knowing, knowing like, okay, this has been set down. I can now move on with my day a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it helps you move through it in a way and to, to, to get, you can leave it behind because it's dealt with in a way. So that adds to the freedom that you have moving on in the day, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's not dealt with, but it's, it's, um, it's I don't know, like, again, it's, it's recorded, you know, it's like, okay, it's I don't seen, have to think perhaps. about anything. Sorry, what's up? I said, it, maybe perhaps it's seen that it's, it's noticed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's seen, and now I know, like, if I want to go back and see what I've been thinking about, I can at any time. Yeah. But now that's, like, set down, and uh, I can move on from that if, if I, as needed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know sometimes when I'm overwhelmed with work or concern or worry or emotions, um, to make sense of it, or even to, to find some structure or some reason, perhaps, in this chaos of thoughts, writing things down actually puts it in, in, a, in a place or makes it accountable for it, as you say. I think yeah. it's, it has a hugely beneficial factor in this sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, I know that just just going back to like the value the value of the structure so many people that i talk to um talk about you know say that well i just journal when something interesting happens and um chances are if that's your strategy you're not going to do it because if there's something interesting happening um you probably don't have a lot of time <laughs> you know, to write occupied you know? with that yeah right right exactly yeah. um and it also creates the sort of like the burden of decision-making. Um, whereas like, oh, is this something important enough for me to write you down? To, you have to judge it, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you mentioning like the freedom of discipline, you know, um, and I think a lot of that freedom is just the freedom from decision-making. Exactly, and so, through habit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think there's anything in our childhood that prepares us for the stress of decision making no. that we have to deal with every day as adults. So when it becomes a habit, it becomes one less thing that you have to decide about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, a very important point. I actually take quite a lot of decisions just by the flip of a coin because it just helps me. And, and it also tells me how I feel, how I really feel about it. If the coin tells me something else that I feel inside, I might not do it, but still it creates some kind of determination. Ah, oh, okay, decision made, you know? I don't well, know. Yeah. I love the simplicity of that. And just like, I, I can see how that's effective because like you flip the coin and then you like, if you realize that you're disappointed in the outcome, 
that kind of helps you to, you know, be in touch with, yeah. you know, your actual feelings about it. Yeah. And also there's this, we talked about this day and age, you mentioned that we're bombarded by options and choices and information. And actually today I bought a new office chair um, and I, I, and it was an expensive one. So I decided the end, I just flipped the coin and the coin while I was on the phone with the guy, I flipped the coin and said, okay, the coin said, yes, I'll do it. So, and then I don't feel any, 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 fear of missing out or something that maybe there's a better option or something. It's just done. And it you know, mm -hmm. creates a structure for me. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I think I'm going to steal that idea from you. <laughs> That's all right. Actually, I've done, um, I've done an, a talk um, about spontaneity. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the posts. And actually, because of that post, and again, flipping the, flipping the coin. Oh, no, it was because of my spontaneity, I decided to interview um, interview them it's actually a couple and they've lived by 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 the dice and by flipping the coin a lot it's really interesting talk and because of that i decided to climb mount kilimanjaro a week after i flipped a coin to do it <laughs> so, that, that was a lot of fun there's a post on that too which is persistence i think or perseverance but but we're not talking about that now um, <laughs> you 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 file your writings um day by day and month by month. And what I like is the practice that you reread the previous month on the first day of each new month. And to me, this is very interesting. And I, I'd like to ask you to share with me and the viewers and listeners, what happens when you do this? What insights do you gain when you process or reflect on this previous past month? Yeah, so that's actually been more powerful. Like, even though I had mentioned earlier in this interview, like how, um, you know, often, you know, people weren't, you know, reading their previous entries. Yes. This is a relatively um, new practice for me. And the first, um, you know, uh, which is uh, uh, reading the previous month's entries. Um, the first uh, two months that I did that, I was um, surprised by um, First of all, I'm surprised by how much happened, because as you know, the brain isn't built to retain all of that information. Yeah. So that, I mean, I'm still surprised every time that I do that, every time I read the previous month, uh, month's entries, like how much happens in my life. Um, and so the second thing, after the first few months that I read, I was surprised to experience this sense of appreciation and um, uh, I guess gratitude that like, you know, there's just, wow, that was, all these good things happened. Hmm. Uh, and I was wondering, were those, did those happen to be um, particularly good months? And I, th I thought for a minute, like they were just, no, they were just normal months, but I wrote down the, things that were favorable, that uh, were good experiences that I was proud of, as well as the things that were difficult. Yeah. And um, and then I, it made me realize, well, remember how the brain, when it's looking back, it's always goes to the things that it wants to fix. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure you understand that. Like if you okay. look at a, like a blank table, it's perfectly clean. The eye's going to go to that speck of dirt. And just ignore everything else that's like exactly. beautiful yeah. on the table. This so is our, with the media. This is with the world today. This is how we perceive our unfortunate situations, while they actually might be extremely fortunate for us, you know? Right. Yeah. And I, I, that's just the way the brain is, you know, I think built, you know, just like yeah. trying to fix things instead of uh, and focusing more on that than on appreciation. So then just being able to you know, read about all the good things that happened. It provided so much uh, balance, you know, um, in my perspective. Actually, it comes, and I've been looking into this. I've been studying this or examining this for my previous post about the stories we tell ourselves, you know, and how they determine our lives. Because where, where focus goes, energy flows. So it's, it's actually a very critical, critical point that you bring here that by reflecting and recognizing that there's much more good than we sometimes think, it helps us shift our focus and thereby create more good and create more of those experiences. And mm -hmm. what, what, I, what I found while researching this, this story that we tell ourselves 
there was a lady who said that, I forgot her name, but um, she mentioned that basically this is our survival instinct, that we are triggered Absolutely. by our nervous system and our, our amygdala to basically look for the danger and look for the bad things and pay much more attention to that than towards the good things. So yep. and obviously we, we do work very well by, by being aware of how much good there actually is because it reinforces itself. Mm -hmm. So this is a really interesting point and a great argument to take up the practice of, of journaling. This is something you discovered by doing it over a longer period of time. So it's not yeah. a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it's actually you finding this by reflecting on your on your own writings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like I mean, you can experience this benefit. Not so I've been journaling. <clears throat> I have a I have journal entries, uh, daily entries for the past seven years. Um, so, even, <clears throat> so even if you just start do it, I, I believe you can experience this benefit even if you've just after you've done it for a week, you know, you don't have to do it for as long as I've had, you know, you can very easily start to, you know, you know, see the benefit of like actually reading about, you know, um, what you've written about a, a positive experience, like, um, very, very quickly, um, to this practice. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I have another question, but if you wanted to add yeah. something, feel free. No, no, go ahead. Okay, great. So you mentioned this is also something that I think is an important point because you mentioned in the article in the New York Times that in Western society, we don't have many rituals. And we already touched upon it a little bit with your yoga in the morning and then your writing practice. Um, you have your rituals of your own, which you've developed. Mm -hmm. And I think that these rituals are very important um, because they have value. But can you, can you share more about what these rituals bring you? What is the value in having this ritual? Or is it related to this discipline or this habit that we need? Or is there also some sacred element to it? Um, I think my first thought is that, um, is going back to like the freedom from decision making. Yeah. Um, so I uh, um, just knowing that I can get out of bed. I don't have to think about how I'm going to start my day. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah right. And um, so um, a little bit deeper than that is um, you know as, as I mentioned just a. Uh, starting the day with these, with these moments of self-care. Um, even if I, you know, went to bed, went to bed too late, I made mistakes yesterday. Um, maybe like I'm, you know, had like, a, you know, an extra drink that I shouldn't have had, you know, it's like waking up and having these moments of self-care sends that message of like, that I'm worth it, no matter what happened yesterday, yeah. I'm worth it having having this time um and uh just uh, and also sending the message of like you know knowing that i'm i have the agency i have the the power to to take care of myself and like and then you know it's it's just a very useful and positive way you know to start the day um and, uh, you know, it's not, it doesn't always happen every day. There's days when just like, oh, wow, you know, just like <laughs> have to hit the ground running with like something that's come mm -hmm. up, but just knowing like, I can always, always go back to it. Um, um, and, uh, but yeah, I, I see, um, I often find myself very envious of people who live in, um, live a monastic lifestyle, you know, the, mm -hmm. um, and and people might think of that as just like you know maybe um, like a type of prison you know they don't leave their monastery they you know it's extremely structured and I just associate that with um with uh, just freedom yeah. you know just yeah, a, it's it's the it's the freedom through discipline absolutely yeah yeah and and I think what you what you're 
what you're doing with creating this practice is that you're not only creating anchors for your past experience of the previous day and then the previous month by reflecting on it, but also you're creating anchors for self-care, as you said, for, mm -hmm. for, for honoring yourself and, and for making the space for this part. So it, it makes, yeah, I think it's hugely a beneficial practice. I've already decided that, and also, as you said at the beginning, that really that really helped me out a lot. That you said that one time you said, oh, I would spend home, I was home all day, I did my taxes, that was it. Mm -hmm. And maybe later you added something, but that that's good enough. That's oh, yeah. very liberating. It doesn't because I have this idea sometimes. This is this is obviously my my fault, but thinking that things should be perfect and all this stuff. Da, 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 mm -hmm. It shouldn't. And I'm getting free from that. But yeah, you've definitely yeah. helped in this process. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect journal or a perfect journaling practice. Yeah. I, I, you know, teach in the workshop, the only wrong way to journal is to not journal. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like even if you, I, I, you know, people might get caught up with um, feeling like they have to write with absolute integrity and really capture every, every mm -hmm. yeah. thing accurately, all of their feelings and thoughts about it. And um you know, I give the example of like an argument I had gotten into um, with my sister when um, just after my dad had passed and we had um, uh, were planning the food for the memorial service. Wow. We got into a huge argument, a very heated argument about yeah. how many lasagnas, you know, to bring. And of course, there's all this history um, in our relationship that sure. kind of led to that. And then that night I thought like, well, oh, man, how do I even start to write about that? And then I just decided to write, uh, got into an argument with Anne about lasagna. And it just allowed me to like, just also keep it simple. It's documented that struggle was honored. We got through that. And, um, but also to kind of see the humor in it, you know, to like see it for what it was like, man, that's what just happened. <laughs> um, is that the perfect way? It, it, that's what. That's how I did it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think that is the perfect way by there not being a perfect way. You know, because that's yeah. just like you said with the, with this perfectly clean table where we have this little speck which we focus on. Actually, I I feel we should be much more imperfect because people, in my opinion, they become perfect with their imperfections. You know, yeah. and and we we often fool ourselves thinking that we need to be perfect. You know, and, and yeah, this is hugely liberating when we don't have to. And, and I guess this is also when it comes to your practice of journaling, that there's no fixed way of doing it. But I think honoring the practice with the date and the, and the day, that makes sense and it creates an anchor and it creates a space where you can later on add something when, whenever you feel, if you want to. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it was just a just thinking again about like uh um reading over previous entries you know when um and one thing that um i was really nervous about do, last year when you know during the shutdown i had time to actually go back and read all of my entries since 2014 and i was actually printing them out um because I, I do it digitally and the, the workshop is taught for both handwritten and digital journaling yeah. um but I was so nervous about it um, because I thought it was going to trigger this uh, this inner critic, you know, just looking at things that I'd done and decisions I'd made and thinking like, ah, you know, it's so stupid, you know. <laughs> but uh, what I found was so interesting was the compassion that I had for myself, mm -hmm. even as I was doing something that, you know, like maybe I wish I'd done differently and realizing like that, wow, I had a lot going on at that time and also, um uh, knowing that I was working with the information that I had. Yeah. Uh, and I, so I was just so surprised, like, even though, you know, um, yeah, just, just the compassion that I had for myself that I just really wasn't expecting. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting observation to have. I guess you get to know yourself yeah. much better by, by reflecting on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. Right. I mean, again, like the, 
with the brain, as you know, we mentioned the brain set up to just like going back and like, oh, I wish I hadn't made that mistake. If you go back and just like see the context of the time, and see what was going on, then, you know, that really helps, you know, as, as I said before, to provide some perspective. Yeah. And, and again, the whole thing with mistakes, it's also idiotic, I, I feel, because mistakes are the best things that can happen to you especially if you have an opportunity to ref reflect on them and learn from it, you know, because oh, yeah. perfection comes or, or, or mastery comes from failure and, and, and just trying again and, and persisting in the, in the practice. And I guess um, when you journal, it helps, or it helps um, amplify your, 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 your awareness and your presence to what you're doing and thereby also increases your learnings, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, it's just a. It, it's interesting that that it's so simple. It is such a simple practice, you know. But as I'm doing it, I just I just can't see how I can not do it now. <laughs> you know, it's um, so so integral to you know just you know me getting closer to you know feeling a bit more centered, um, and. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, so uh, this, teaching this workshop feels so, so important to me because it's, a. Uh, I just want to remind people that, you know, this is such a wonderful option that's, you know, requires no financial investment. Yeah. Um, like you don't even, you don't even have to take the workshop, you know, you know, my, you don't have to take my workshop to start journaling, yeah. you know, it's helpful, you know, it's great to have those four weeks that, you know, provide the accountability, gives you some ideas, but man, you know, anybody can just start, you know, yeah. right now and just find, start playing with ways that work for them. Yeah. You know, um, does it feel right to worry, write in a notebook, notebook? Let me try doing it digitally. See how that feels. Yeah. I wanted you know? to ask you and, about that. Yeah. Sorry. I wanted to ask you about that because that's another thing that when I when I looked into journaling, I, I read about how it's so important to write it by hand, you know, and actually my writing, I mean, here, these are my notes that I've been taking now, uh -huh. but I, sometimes I struggle to read it even on the same day, you know, so <laughs> to, to write by hand, it's, it's a challenging part. You write by 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 computer and, and have it in, in neatly organized folders that actually appeals to me. So what mm -hmm. can you share about the, the, the means of journaling? Should it be written or by hand or by calligraphy pen or whatever? Or can it just be written on, on, a, on a desktop computer or on a laptop or whatever? Yeah, right. On your phone. I mean, I take a lot of notes on my phone, actually. I have a huge mm -hmm. little brain farts that I put in mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a moment just to close this blind. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay, it's gonna be a bit easier. Um, so, yeah. Um, as far as uh, you know, handwritten versus digital. Um, it's it's. I encourage people just to to find what works for them. Some people um, say that many people prefer to um, handwrite their journals, and some people. Uh, I had one participant say that they found that they were able to. Um, they felt that it was easy to write more subjectively um, when they were um, handwriting, and some people prefer handwriting because it feels more separate from work. You know, because they associate typing on a computer with work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and. There's also um, handwriting, it's more gratifying, you know, just like just seeing something that like it comes that from your brain through your hands, through the pen, you yeah. can feel the scratching on the notebook, you know. Um, so I think that's a wonderful way to do it. And <laughs> I, um, uh, I have never done it that way, but I've started to play around with it. Um, uh, just like d during times when I just feel like I need a, um, need a break from the screen. Yeah. I know that I can handwrite my, you know, handwrite a page, take a picture of that and import that image 
um, into the digital document. Ah, so you can do it both. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the things I teach is ways to go back and forth between the two. Yeah. Um, if you uh, are handwriting, but you're in a, like, say on a train, you're standing on a train in New York City, <laughs> that happens a lot where it's really hard to handwrite or yeah. you're in any situation, you don't have your journal with you. Chances are you have a smartphone, you can just use your notes app, take some notes into that that you can then refer to for um, uh, for your handwritten journal. Um, I, I love doing it digitally. I love like having, I use the pages, um, uh, word processing, yeah. um, and uh, I have it both on my phone, and um, so I can use it on my phone. Yeah. It immediately up uploads to the computer, yeah. um, and it's very easy to back up. Um, and uh, at the end of every month, I always like back up the month's uh, documents into like its own file. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also love having the ability to um, to import images. I think that's a lot of fun. Often I will, uh, um, you know, take a photo just for the journal. Um, mm. And I also love the fact that, you know, we take often we're, when we're taking photos, we're not taking it because we actually think we're going to frame it, you know, uh, or print it out. Um, more often we're taking photos, you know, just to connect with an experience. Um, so that's one really nice thing about, you know, the digital journal is that it gives you a place to put these. And they don't have to be good. It's just like just a you know a visual reference that just some, something that provides provides a bit more dimension. Um, so there's uh, it, it's interesting listening to people um, their experiences as they're taking the workshop. You know, over the weeks, you know, hearing what they've done to experiment with their own you know, practice. You know, I said, well, I started out with this, that didn't work. You know, I started out with this beautiful journal and I was afraid to use it because it's too pretty and my handwriting is terrible, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, and just, uh, you know, some people just like, you know, what works best for me, a spiral notebook, <laughs> you know, and a ballpoint pen. Um, so that's what's nice about the workshop is, you know, it provides a space for, you know, during those four weeks, you can just like practice and play around and see what works for you. And, and hear from what works from other people. And that's often also a big inspiration. Get some new ideas. Yeah. 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 That is that is uh, a wonderful part of it. But um, yeah, I mean, to summarize, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You know, you can incorporate, you know, both handwritten digital. You can use an app. Um, people find success in journaling apps. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I just encourage people to play around. Um but if nothing else, you know, just find a notebook as you're starting out and, you know, or, or use your notes app or any easy to use, you know, um, word processing and just get those, get those days and dates in. Exactly. I was going to say, start with that and then the rest will follow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, we touched on it um, a little bit already because I mentioned that I saw those three points of the benefits of, of journaling on your Instagram page. Um, and it mentions processing experiences, and we talked about it quickly, but I want to hear a little bit more, um, yeah, from you about this, this particular point, because it triggered me. I think, I think actually, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why I asked this question. I think in, in society nowadays, and also, I guess, in our human interactions, everything is so fast paced that we don't really allow ourselves to process our experiences. Mm -hmm. And what that results in is, I think, illnesses and, and disease and discomfort, anxiety, and all kinds of things stem from that if we don't move through our experiences and if we don't experience our emotions or our feelings. And I know from experience that when I write about my feelings or my emotions, it really helps me clarify and helps me kind of move through it. And as you said before, at least you, you are accountable to it. So you acknowledge that it's there. Can you say more about this in regard to journaling? Because I think this is a very important point. And, and it's an argument why I was curious about this topic to begin with, because I believe it helps with that. Yeah. Um... I, I think just just writing um, 
writing about an experience, um, I think that like anyone, like I, I'm interested to know like how it actually does help us process other than like, it just, no, giving yourself the time and space to just, to just sit with something. Mm-hmm. Um, and to possibly, even if you're just writing, you know, just a summary of what happened, like, wow, well, you know, how do I, how do I best describe what happened? Um, uh, just can, like, as I said, just help you to see it for what it was. Um, and, you know, for some like people, I think I had, um, one participant who uh, said that they thought of the um, the journal as a friend with really great listening skills. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, just this this practice, you know, just writing just allows you, you know, that that space to to actually sit with it, right? And you know, I think we find um, so so many of us uh, have the answers to our own questions mm-hmm. inside us. And it just kind of allows you to kind of channel your own inner wisdom, your own experience yeah. a bit more. Well, um, I, have, I have some thoughts and some learnings that I can share with you. Okay. I'm doing this, this process to answer the question that you raised, like, how does this work? And what I, what I know from my own experience and what came up with my post on being in the now, being in the present, Mm-hmm. Um, there was um, Faye Mandel I interviewed, and she she shared about um, basically a methodology to come in the present. And basically, this was through experiencing the emotion that you feel, because mm-hmm. if you're if you're uh, concerned or worried or anxious, that's typically about the future, you know. And then by experiencing that emotion, it brings you back into the here and now. So that was by, by actually feeling through the emotion, by actually allowing it to be there. And a similar thing came up when I talked to Michael Kolb um, about radical honesty. I talked about honesty, or I, I researched honesty. And honesty, as he, as he shared, and it really resonates with me, it's not about being honest to tell somebody your arguments or whatever, but actually just to ventilate it, to share what you experience in the moment from moment to moment. And by expressing it, by allowing it to be there, you can be free from it. The same with anger, that you don't hold the anger inside. You freely, honestly express in the moment what you feel, and that allows you to move on and get over it. And Hmm. I imagine, and this brings me to to, to, um, your question, I think that journaling does that too. It provides us as, as a means to be with it and to allow the feelings to be there and to be lived through. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's hugely beneficial to, to do this through journaling because it creates, I think there's a number of ingredients. There's space there, there is presence, there is, in some cases, at least for fragments of time, freedom of judgment, mm-hmm. um, some level of subjectivity, perhaps, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, objectivity, um, and obviously also subjectivity It's probably plentiful there, but it can all just be there. And I think it, it helps. I think this is very helpful in this process. That, that's what came up for me. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I know that there's times where like you're, when you're feeling something um, very strongly um, mm-hmm. that you would love to just process, um, but you don't have your journal with you. You can't be like, hold that thought, annoying coworker. I need to go write about this, yeah. you know? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but it, I guess it's kind of, it's useful to know that like, wow, at the end of today, I'm going to write about this and you know, what, what am I going to write about this? Yeah. You know, um, cause you know, so much of it is just kind of reflecting on the day, you know, as opposed to like, I mean, it's, it's wonderful if like you can kind of sit with a feeling in the present and write about that, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, but also knowing that you also, you know, had the option to reflect on something you were experiencing and, um, and knowing that's one, th- 
you know, during times of, you know, like recording times that are just like painful or awkward, mm -hmm. you know, just like the discomfort of anger. Um, reading, like writing about it and having it recorded shows me like that that's another thing that I survived. You know, yeah. that's another thing that I got through and I lived through yeah. and I'm going to live through it again and I'm okay. <laughs> um, I, I really like that actually, because if you have, if you have this structure and this, this mm -hmm. process of writing uh, or of journaling in, in those moments that you are feeling something, like you said, with your coworker and you're overwhelmed and, and you just know for yourself, Oh, wait, you know, in the evening or in the next morning, I know that there's my practice. I can just reflect on this. I can make sense of it. And that yeah. releases the pressure to having to make sense of it all in that moment. So yes, yeah. indeed, I think a huge thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. And uh, yeah, that's um, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to incorporate that into the workshop. Yeah, awesome. That's great. Hey, um, I have a lot of questions, but I also don't want to um, take up your, your, your Saturday morning, but I do want to end with, with one question that I always end with. Yeah. And that's what question about journaling didn't I ask, which I should have asked? So is there some angle or some, some perspective that I've completely overlooked? I'd love to hear that. Um, can I, let's see. There's two, all right. Well, there's two things that are interesting that um, about journaling. Um, one is just the history of it mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just how um, I believe that it started kind of as a practice in the 1800s. Before that, all journaling was a uh, uh, it was mostly for business or travel, and um, but I think the uh, the true predecessor to journaling was letter writing, and um, so letter writing has it doesn't seem that that is something that's a practice so much anymore, um, but uh, but that was it became more common as people you know were became literate and like writing materials became available to them. So, um, so then I, I think there's just like this history that began with journal keeping and then with, uh, social media, um, I'm concerned that, um, uh, that it's kind of taken the place, like, instead of like, um, just writing about an experience to honor it, you know, we just, we post about it, yeah. um, something that we want to share instead of writing to somebody it's like oh well they follow me on facebook so they'll see you know my experience um which is very efficient but it doesn't you know allow for like really honoring and processing and um so i think that i don't i feel that social media has replaced it i'm not and i don't mean to dismiss the value of social media mm -hmm. but um i my hope is that journaling can allow people to be a bit more intentional about um about their use of social media for example um if like you make it as part of your practice like um at the end of the month to reflect on the on the month behind you and just write a summary you know just like hey this is how my month was here are some photos from the previous month um i think that would just you know give so much more meaning and value um to the way we use it um I mean, just as there's things that need to be current, you know, that people want to use, uh, um, that can't wait until the end of the month, you know, that's understandable. So it, I think uh, it's just kind of, um, it's a practice that can really um, enhance and uh, give more meaning to practice of social media. Um, and just the other um, question that some people, that I appreciate, you know, that people ask, they don't know, they, they asked me whether I write about my feelings or write more about the facts. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so one of the, one of the exercises is, um, you know, where we um, write about an experience first objectively and then subjectively an experience, which, you know, which feels um, how, how both ways of writing felt. 
and to understand the value of both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I often encourage people, you know, to try to experiment, you know, writing, writing the facts first. Um, and then see which of those facts they want to write more about. Because sometimes just writing the facts can, um, can be more efficient, you know, can just be easier. And then you can see which of those facts, you know, need the attention that you want to write about. Yeah. Um, so there's really, you know, such value um, in, in both ways of writing. Writing objectively allows you to see that, see them for what it is, step back from it. And like writing subjectively allows you to process. Um, so sorry, I <laughs> gave you two things that I, you no, know. No, but that's great. Because um, that's why I like this question, because yeah. these are things that, or angles that I that I didn't consider, and through this way, I'm I'm, I'm introduced to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and actually, I I've made some notes here. I really like um, first writing subjectively and then objectively, and also to write the facts the, the facts the, the facts first. So that's writing yeah. objectively first, actually. Yeah. Right to write objectively and then subjectively. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. First, objectively, and then. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, I have a. Uh, my father is calling me. Okay. <laughs> that sounds important. No, no. I, 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 no, I will call him back in a, in a little bit, I think. Okay. Yeah. Hey, um, John, it, it, it was great. I really enjoyed talking to you. I, uh, yeah, I appreciate it a lot. And yeah. I have to say, uh, I learned a lot, and I think I will sign up for your for your workshop because oh, um, yeah, I, I think there's some more to to be learned. And what I've already decided at the beginning of our of our I can share this with you of our of our talk is that I need to pick up on this uh, on this practice definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why my it's my mission to just um, have you know just share it as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm so grateful to you for inviting me to do this. And um, you know, just listening to your other interviews, I just realized you have such a wonderful interview style that I felt, you know, well, this you. was definitely worthwhile. And I love the project that you're um that you're engaging on. I think that's very exciting. Yeah. I'm so yeah. glad that I was able to be a part of it. Well, I'm I'm very, I'm very happy about that too. And I'll I'll definitely stay in touch and I'll yeah, I will sign up, but I'll, I'll do that too. outside okay. of the outside of the recording. I'll be in touch over email, and when when the post goes live, I'll send you all the details also. Okay, that's wonderful. Hey, thanks so much, and have a Thank beautiful so weekend. Yes. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye. Bye, Bye John. Bye.